Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna review the Pit Boss 456D pellet grill. I picked it up because I didn't have a lot of money to spend this season uh, to get a expensive pellet grill, so this was a nice introductory model that was under $300, so I thought I would pick it up and start cooking on, on pellet grills. All I had before is a stick burner offset Oklahoma Joe's and a Masterbuilt electric smoker. I've also got a water smoker, a vertical uh, barrel smoker. But this thing, I really wanted to get into the, into the pellet grill type cooking, so that's why I picked this up. Overall, my first impression is it's really great value for money. So if you're thinking about getting this, maybe it's on sale where you're from, I would definitely recommend getting it. There are a few things that I wanna mention though, just so you're aware of all the facts before you purchase this. If you're a current subscriber to my channel, then thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it and I love making these videos. So if there's any videos that you think you wanna see on my channel, then please let me know in the comments. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing and hitting that like button. I've got a lot of videos upcoming with this model in particular. So if you're thinking about picking one up, then I'd love to show you how I'm cooking on it in the next few months. All right. So let's start with the good points and then I'll move into the bad points. So the first good point is price. I picked this thing up for less than $300 and from what I've heard, it's on sale at most Lowe's locations across North America. So if you're looking to get a inexpensive intro sort of level pellet cooker, then this is a good one to go with. Uh, so definitely consider that. So the price is really good for what you're actually getting. Another good point is the ease of use. All you really have to do is open up this uh, hopper box, fill it up with pellets, and then you can start smoking right away. It's really set and forget. It's almost as convenient as an electric smoker. In fact, it's probably equally as convenient as an electric smoker. The only downside is that you have to fill the pellets quite frequently, but uh, I'll go into that later in this video. So very easy to use, very easy to control the temperature. And it's nice because you can sort of set it to the right temperature. You can put a pork butt or a brisket on here and then you can go watch the game and then come back a few hours later and check on it and it's still gonna be at the right temperature. So really easy to use and I think that's a big good point. The third good point is versatility. You can use this thing as a smoker so you can smoke things low and slow at very low temperatures. You can set it to smoke, which I think goes as low as 100 degrees or just under 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can go as high as 475. So you can cook uh, things really hot and fast in here. Uh, maybe even pizza because 475 is a, a really high temperature. So opening this up, you can see that it's pretty dirty inside because I've been cooking on this thing quite a bit since I bought it. But it has a heat shield here. And this heat shield is covering basically the the heating chamber and if you remove this you can take that right off and you can see that there's some slits here and that will allow the flame to come up and you can use it basically to grill food directly over the heat I haven't used it yet but uh, it's nice to have that versatility so versatility wise it's got a lot of options I think it says in the box that it can actually do seven things like broiling smoking grilling, flame broiling. I mean, it's got a bunch of things, but really it does two things. It does low and slow barbecue really well, and it does direct heat uh, grilling, essentially. The fourth good point is portability. This thing is pretty light. It's not heavy like other models of pellet grills you might get, and it's easy to move around. It's got some nice big caster wheels uh, that makes it easier to move across the deck. And with uh, two people, you can easily move it. One thing you should know is that you're not supposed to lift it from that rack over there. That's not a structural element of the smoker. You're really supposed to lift it by basically either this handle here or the actual smoker itself. So it's a little bit unwieldy to, uh, to move it because there's no big handles right on the side of it. But uh, I, I haven't had any issues really. I think what makes this thing great is that I can just throw it in the back of my truck and take it out to the cabin. So I'll be doing that this summer, which will be great. And you don't have to lug around a huge smoker and have it in one location forever. So I like the fact that this unit is more mobile. The fifth good point is that it has pretty good temperature monitoring. It has an internal temperature probe right on the side here. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's basically sticking right up. So it's gauging the temperature from this side of the cooking chamber which works for the most part. I'm sure there's some temperature fluctuations uh, throughout the whole cooking chamber, but for the most part, it's read pretty accurately according to my tests with my own thermometers, like my thermopen. Uh, and it's also got two little 
connections here to put meat probes in. So you can buy an extra add-on from Pit Boss to plug into these two holes and you can have two thermometers that come out and you can plug into the meat in your, in your cooker so that you can gauge internal temperature while you're going. So I'll probably pick some of those up and I'll let you guys know how it turns out. The sixth good point is that it's pretty solidly constructed. I mean, more expensive smokers might have a thicker gauge steel, but this uh, does pretty good and it's uh, not flimsy. When I was assembling it, I did an assembly video and it was pretty easy to put together. You could tell there was some quality worksmanship in the materials and it, it wasn't just cheap stuff. So I appreciated that, especially at the low price. And it's, it's definitely not a flimsy model with cheap metal. So I think that's a good plus. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bad points or the disadvantages that I found when I was using this. Now they're not all really bad points. It's just, you get what you pay for, right? So when you're buying something like this at less than $300, it's not gonna have all the features and the quality components that you might expect in a more expensive smoker. So I think that Pit Boss has sacrificed on some things that you might fi find on more expensive models of smokers, but they did that to keep the price down so that people could afford it as an intro level pellet smoker. So the first bad point and probably the biggest one for me is the hopper capacity. The hopper does not hold many pellets. It definitely doesn't hold a full bag. From a 20 pound bag, I probably can fit maybe a quarter of that bag in here to a half of bag in here. And as a result, I'm having to frequently replenish the pellets in the pellet smoker. So I just did a pork butt and I probably had to refresh the pellets every three hours or so. Now, having said that, it was really cold outside at the time. So that probably had a lot to do with it. But I do find that I'm frequently checking this pellet box to make sure that there's pellets in here. And sometimes I've even run out of pellets and the temperature has gone down as a result that I had to fill it up and slowly bring the temperature up again. So it's been a bit of a learning process about how often I have to fill the pellets, but I'm checking it probably every two hours or so. Pit Boss does have a pellet hopper extension that can fit on a similar model like this and it'll hold up to, I think 20 pounds of pellets. The problem is it doesn't work with this model. I think it might fit on this model, but I emailed Pit Boss and I asked them if it's compatible with this model and they didn't recommend using it because it could make the smoker too heavy and it might tip over. So I don't know, that's a big downfall for, for me. I wish I had more hopper capacity or at least the option to buy something with more hopper capacity. But for now, I'm fine with this because the price was so good. Bad point number two is the grilling area. Now this model has 456 square inches of cooking surface basically. The problem is a lot of that is taken up by this little warming rack up here. And you know, I don't really use that that much because if you're cooking a pork butt or a brisket, you can't even really fit it in underneath this thing and put other meat on top of it. So when I've been cooking, I've just been taking this top rack out entirely. So the remaining cooking surface is pretty small. But having said that, I mean, I haven't really had any issues because I just cook a pork butt or a brisket or maybe a rack of ribs at one time. If you're cooking for a bigger family, it might be an issue though. And you might want to look at upgrading to a model with more surface area. The third bad point is that the temperature can fluctuate quite a bit during the cooking process, depending on where you put the meat inside of the cooking chamber. On the side of the smoker where the heating element is or the flame, it's a lot hotter than the other side. So I've found that I have to rotate my meat throughout the process probably every hour or so to make it cook evenly. So that can be a problem if you're doing like a 10 hour cook with a brisket or a pork bun and you want to cook it really evenly. The only thing I would recommend really is just switching around the meat as often as possible and maybe keeping the meat on the right hand side of the smoker so it's more indirect and the radiant heat from this panel isn't uh, sort of in direct contact with only one portion of the meat. I just try to cook everything on the, the right side as much as possible because of that. Another disadvantage is the control or rather lack thereof that you have with controlling the temperature in the main cooking chamber. This uh, unit only goes up in 50 degree increments. So for example, it goes 200, 225, 250, 300, 350, and so on by 50 degrees. So if you wanna cook at 275, you kinda of gotta cook at 300 really. So you don't have that type of granular control that you might have with other more expensive smokers. So that's something to keep in mind. Another disadvantage is that you don't have any Wi-Fi capabilities with this unit. A lot of smokers these days can be controlled basically from your phone or a remote control. So you can set it up so you can change the temperature, you can monitor your meat temperature, you can monitor your internal cooking chamber temperature, 
all from your phone, so you basically don't even have to get up from the couch. You can sometimes do it from work even and, and put some pork butt or brisket in here and just go to work and then cook it low and slow all day and monitor the temperature. Some people do that if they're close to home. So you can't really do that with this model because it's not Wi-Fi enabled, um, which is a disadvantage, but you, again, you get what you pay for, right? They're not gonna add Wi-Fi into this model because that would jack the price up quite a bit and put it out of people's price range. So I'm happy not having that feature um, because the price point was so low. I already feel like I'm getting enough value here that I don't really need Wi-Fi on this model. But if that's something that's important to you, then maybe consider a more higher end model. Another bad point in my view, the tray on this side, it's nice to have the extra tray space. This comes off, but the problem is that it has holes in it and that really doesn't make any sense to me because there's nothing underneath it to catch any drippings that might uh, go down through these holes. It'll just drop onto your deck or your backyard, for example. So I put some you know, turkey on here, some brisket, some pork butt, and the grease kind of just drips down. So you'll, you'll have to have some sort of dish in here to catch all the drippings. Um, I think the holes are probably just so that water doesn't pool and stagnate or, or rust this thing. Um, but in general, the holes just don't make any sense to me. So that's kind of a minor disadvantage, but uh, not a huge point in the grand scheme of things. So I'll put this back here. And the last kind of bad point, this is really minor, but the wheels don't lock. It would be nice if there was wheels on the front legs as well as the back legs and if both of them locked so that I could easily sort of maneuver it around my deck or my backyard patio and just lock it into place and make it more mobile. Um, but as it is right now, you kind of uh, have to uh, pick it up by the cooking chamber and sort of wiggle it around. So it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult, um, but luckily it's, it's light and you can maneuver it around quite easily. Um, but those extra wheels would be kind of nice. So the overall verdict is great value for money. It does everything that you need a pellet smoker to do. It does the grilling portion. If you like to grill over real wood, then you can open up the flame broiler unit. If you just cook low and slow barbecue, like I mainly do, then you can cover up that flame broiler. You can cook as low as uh, 150 degrees, I think, and uh, cook things really low and slow. Get some pretty good smoke flavor in there, depending on what kind of pellets you're using. It's very easy to use. It's uh, very mobile and versatile, and it's really inexpensive. So if you're looking to get into pellet smoking, but you don't have a lot of money to spend, and you're not sure if uh, pellet smoking is the right thing for you necessarily, then this is a, a small investment to get into that world of, of pellet smoking. So, you know, I'd highly recommend this for, for what it is. Uh, I'll do another review in another few months, maybe a, a year as well, after I use it a little bit more, see how it holds up. Hopefully it doesn't have any defaults or break down or anything. Uh, there is an electrical component to it, obviously, and it's got the auger system and uh, I'll see how it holds up over time. But right now it's doing what I need it to do. It's providing a lot of value for me. And I think that if it wasn't priced so low, then I would have never got a pellet smoker necessarily until I saved up you know, $1,000 to get a, a more higher end pellet smoker. So I think that's the main value of this. It's an entry level smoker for people who want to get into smoking and they're not really sure what their style is yet but they think that this might be a good versatile thing to use. Um, also, if you don't have a barbecue, this can replace the function of a barbecue. So it's uh, got a lot of different uses and I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of it if you, if you buy it. The last thing I wanted to say is that it's got a lot of extra features that come in the box with it. It's got a cover, which is great because that comes free. And I'm always having issues because I'll buy a piece of equipment and it doesn't come with a cover and I'm too cheap to buy one, and then you know it gets rusty because of the rain and the moisture and everything. Uh, so I'll cover it with tarps and they, those get holes in them or they don't really work. Uh, so it's nice that this comes with a good cover right from the get-go, so I don't have to go and purchase something else. The cover has held up so far. It uh, it's, looks pretty good, it looks waterproof. The, the water has beaded off of it, and it's protected the smoker from a whole bunch of uh, rain and snow that we've had recently. So it's pretty good quality. And the other thing is it comes with a beer 
opener. It comes with a bottle opener right here. I haven't used that yet, but uh, you know, it's nice to have. It's an extra feature. And you know what? I think I'm gonna use that right now. I'll test it out. Seeing as I'm doing a review, I might as well review that as well. All right, this is the first time I've used this thing, so let's see how it works. There you go, super easy. That's a great feature. So you can drink some beers while you're grilling or smoking your low and slow barbecue. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful and I hope it helped you make a decision about whether to buy the Pit Boss 456D. Uh, again, I think it's great value for money and if you're in the market for a pellet smoker and don't have one, you're looking for an intro level smoker, then definitely grab this opportunity while it lasts and get this smoker because uh, it's working for me so far. So thanks a lot guys. If you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button, like the video. Thanks a lot. Happy smoking.